G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman, and thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at how to make and use an improvised hobo stove. Now it's not always applicable to be able to have an open fire. You might have time constraints or there might be the legal reasons and restrictions where you can't always have an open fire. So one way we can get around that is if you can still at least have say naked flame is to make yourselves an improvised hobo stove. Now what it is, this is simply a an old uh, can, I can't remember exactly what it was, it might have been a, a, a pineapple tin, in which case I, um, I ate whatever was in it. Um, cut out the top with the can opener, I've taken that top and then put it in the bottom for extra reinforcing, and then I've gone right around the outside, around the bottom with a um, can opener, also or the, one of the triangular can openers, also known as a church key in the, in the States. And I've gone all the way around and put a series of those triangular holes in that. I've done a few up as well, up the top as well, and that's because when you've got a larger pot, um, you need to actually, which takes up the whole circumference of the of the um, tin, you need to have air that sort of uh, um, can can get in there. And on top of that, I've simply just got a bit of wire and created a bale, and it's that simple. It's, um, and now we've got a means of making fire, well, of carrying fire, and making a very small cooking stove. It has a nice little th thermal column of heat. Because it's, uh, particularly it works well with vehicle camping. And the other great thing is if you're at home and you can have a fire in your backyard, and it's safe to do so, of course, you can actually practice your bushcraft skills in your own, in own backyard. With, with a few things, little bits of wood, you can actually practice some of your fire lighting skills and you can practice your camp cooking in your backyard just by doing little things like this because it's nice and easy and contained. So the other thing that I've got is you can use any number of grills. I actually have a wire grill that I've made for this, but I don't know where to put it at the moment. It's, um, I think I've left it back back inside but it's not to worry I do have another alternative and this is another grill that I often use uh, and this is made by Alton Goods it's a mini titanium grill and I take this has actually been all around the world and it's a great piece of kit it weighs nothing fits in the back bottom of your pack and um, this is going to be our grill over the top you can make as I said if I, I can't find it if I had it here I'd show you and it's a little wire grill that you can stick over the top and improvise your own. You can actually put wood in at the same time. This is a little bit too fine to do this as you'll see, but nevertheless, it works really, really well. So having said that, let's get stuck into um, getting this fire cranked up and we might uh, make ourselves a cup of tea as well. So as always, with your preparation, you need to have your tinder, in which case it's paper bark, we need to have our kindling, matchstick size um, twigs, dead and standing, not wet. And then we've got our next grade, about little finger thickness up to thumb thickness. And that's the only size you need for this. Any bigger, and it's too, too unwieldy to actually use the stove. You just, and you need to have them all prepared to the um, correct size before you start. That's really, really important. So make sure you've got it all laid out, and then once we start the fire, it's, um, it's nice and quick and it's nice and easy. So as always, I'm gonna get the uh, fire going with some paper bark. I've actually got some stringy bark here, so we could use that as well. But no matter what you use, make sure it's buffed up. Actually, it's a little bit wet, that. Once again, always creating lots of surface area. It's a little bit wet that I'm just going to put that aside up up there to dry out. I probably won't need it. I've got plenty of paper bark. 
So I can tear that nice and fluffy. I can either buff that up in my hands or get my knife and scrape a bit like that. Doesn't really matter. And we'll get that fire going with that. The, the knife and my ferro rod, that's all buffed up nice, nice and fine. Now, it should only take one strike. Remember, when we're using a ferro rod, the knife hand is anchored and the ferro rod is pulled back. That's one method. The second method is just to use your thumb. A lot of the time you see people doing all this, that is not the way to use a ferro rod. If you have to use any more than three strikes, it means that your equipment is unsatisfactory your technique is unsatisfactory, or your tender is unsatisfactory. Shouldn't take any more than that. Put some of that in there. Gonna drop that into my, in there, without burning my hand. My first layer, stick them in like that. Remember, it's all graded, you need to go through the gears. Don't jump, don't chip gears. The more you've got these contained, the better. in what I'm trying to do when I broke these up I really want to try and keep them nice and small so they're not protruding through the top because when you've got a, a drill like this you can't stick it on the top So get yourself a thin stick and just those triangular holes, just give them a clean out just to keep those air holes open to get the oxygen in. And if I need to, I can trans transport that somewhere if I need to. Pretty hot at the moment to do that. Luke. Okay, so let's uh, get some water on to boil. So I'm just going to use my Snow Peak titanium cooking cooking mug, which I goes with me all around the world. Great piece of kit along with my uh, clean canteen uh, 40 ounce uh, water bottle, stainless steel water bottle, single wall. Don't get one that's double wall, you, it'll, you'll put a hole in it. But great, great combination. And that's, there's a few other little pots and pans that come with that uh, Snow Peak model. So I'm just going to fill that up. those down with a wider grill you don't have to worry about doing that and that pops straight on over the top and there you go just have to wait for that to uh, boil now which shouldn't take long at all
Well, what I thought we'll do today, we're going to, um, while we're waiting for this water to boil, I've gone and collected some, some native bush tucker. And what I've collected here is a plant that's growing all around here. It's, um, it's called the native sarsaparilla, uh, Smilax glycophylla, and it used to be used by the early colonists to, um, for, for like a licorice substitute or for native sarsaparilla. And it tastes really, really nice. It's very, very sweet. It has a compound in it called um, glycophyllin, and it's a glucoside, and it's actually, um, it tastes really, really nice. And we've got a couple of options with what we do with this. We're going to crush the leaves and uh, stick them in the tea, and we're going to make an infusion out of them, just like you would a, uh, a tea, steep them in the water for about five to 10 minutes. The other thing you can do is uh, we can stick a whole stack of leaves and boil that water down and make a decoction. And pretty much you let the water reduce by half and it sort of makes a very thick syrup. And then you can actually put more water in and boil it down again by half. And that makes a nice thick, like a, like a cough medicine almost. And actually used to be used, um, uh, Aboriginal people used to use and still do in places uh, that for that very thing. It's the berries of this plant, they're very a glossy like berry, they're very very high in vitamin C and uh, they um, taste very nice as well. There's no berries at the moment and they're not in season but these leaves are um, very very uh, very distinctive. You've got a three very prominent longitudinal veins down the, middle, down the middle and you can eat the small young leaves and just chew them up, crush them up and make them like that. Wait a couple of minutes and then we get this really strong sweet aftertaste. That's really really strong depending on what size leaf you get. The younger ones are always the best with most wild edible foods. If it's the younger leaves you go for. Put them in there. Mmm it's a strong one. Very strong, very sweet, tastes really really nice. So in order to make that decoction, I put a whole stack and that's what we're just actually going to do a make a tea, but I'm going to crush a few of those up now and stick them in. Now, this, uh, the uh, Smilax glycophylla also has a, a, a cousin or a, a same species. We have Smilax australis, known as the barbed wire vine. Very similar leaves, actually in size, very similar. As I said, this has five prominent veins down the middle as opposed to three. The um, Smilax glycophylla or uh, native sarsaparilla has long thin tendrils with no thorns. Its brother has lots of thorns along the stem very uh, leathery thick leaves, as I said five prominent, five longitudinal, longitudinal veins down the centre where the native sarsaparilla only has three, much smaller leaf, much more delicate. Uh, these were actually used for um, stems for making friction fire and uh, I actually haven't had to try that, something I've got to um, give a shot with, I haven't found a straight enough one to do that for hand drill. Good, it makes a good woodsman's wire, I've used that quite a few times for that. The black berries on the uh, uh, Smilax australis are also edible, just like the Smilax glycophylla. They're actually both edible, very high in vitamin C. The leaves don't work as they don't taste, they're not sweet like the, uh, the its smaller cousin, the um, Smilax glycophylla, glycophylla. But um, nevertheless, it's still, it's many, many uses. And this is all around here. So you've got a, a nice little tea substitute and we've got a, a useful, um, uh, plant for, for fire, for cordage, and as I said, a vitamin C. So there's actually lots of useful plants around here. So I'm going to put a few more of those leaves in there actually. Doesn't take long to, 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 to boil. So great little system this, so particularly if you can't um, say make a big open fire, but in your backyard you can actually practice a lot of your bushcraft skills without having to go to the bush. Of course there's no substitute for going into the bush and you're going to need to do dirt time and you need to get out to the bush to see the plants and do everything else, but you can just because you're at home there's many things and many ways you can train and practice with and skills you can practice in your own backyard. 
many things you can do. So this is just one way when it comes to fly. I didn't need a big one. You can still practice all your skills in miniature. That's been simmering away for about 20 minutes now. So I'm gonna take that off. So the, the water level's reduced by half. And I'm gonna take that off and that's gonna be, that's a good first stage decoction. If I wanted to make that even stronger, stronger, I'd put a bit more water in and let that reduce for a second time and that'll be a much more stronger decoction. But I'm gonna take that off for now. It's taken about 20, 25 minutes to get that there, but it's actually, I can smell that already. Now a lot of old remedies they talked about with them that had a lot of uh, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. If you boil ascorbic acid, it's going to re it's not just going to render it useless. So, um, uh, so basically, we're drinking this for a sweet drink. Just remember, boiling will destroy the um, ascorbic acid in it, so um, rendering it useless. Just something to remember. But we're drinking this for a nice sweet drink, and uh, mm, does it smell good? I'm just going to let that cool because I'm going to burn my lips on, on my uh, cup there. I'm going to let that cool for a few minutes, then hook in. Wow. That's strong. That's actually almost overpowering of, of, of sweetness, like a, a licorice sweetness, almost like combining licorice with stevia. Really strong, but great. A lot stronger as a decoction than it is as an infusion. And you can do that with many things. And that's um, native star sprella or um, Smilax glycophila. Really top shelf stuff. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short episode on how to make and use an improvised hobo stove. If you like these videos, please punch the subscribe button and tell others about it to help improve the visibility of the channel. And if you'd like to do one of our courses, go to our website www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au. My name's Gordon Dedman. Thanks for watching.